Hey, what up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you today talking about the ever-going rumor that Payback will be Kane's last match in the WWE. Kane having a long career that most people are going to remember spanning back to 1997, debuting at the uh, Hell in the Cell, uh, coming in and killing Undertaker for uh, uh, basically turning on Paul Bear, or maybe Paul Bear turned on him, however you are, you uh, want to see it, and uh, honestly, when it comes down to it, most people remember that as the debut of Kane, but of course, Glenn Jacobs, uh, you know, started wrestling uh, in the early 90s, came to WWF in 1995 with the big promise of making big money, with the big gimmick of Isaac Yankum, DDS. This, of course, with Jerry the King Lawler's dentist, who came to uh, try and dispose of Bret the Hitman Hart for their ongoing feud with uh, Jerry Lawler. Um, you know, Jerry wasn't able to beat Brett himself, so he, you know, you know, brought in his cast of, uh, you know, weird guys. Uh, he tried to use Doink at a uh, at a SummerSlam event, and uh, I don't know that that really never took off. He used that uh, gimmick for about a year, and then right after that was, uh, you know, polished up and said, you know, this isn't really going anywhere, and and you know, he was jobbing out to all guys all over the roster on Monday Night Raw and Superstars and other shows like that. Uh, they brought him out with Jim Ross as fake Diesel uh, to go along with fake Razor Ramon to fight off the uh, the big ratings that uh, WCW Nitro were getting with uh, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall on the other channel, thinking that if Razor Ramon and Diesel were still in the WWF, you know, people wouldn't leave. It, you know, De Vince McMahon was hoping that it was the characters that people were... Um, you know, attached to and not the wrestlers themselves. That never really worked out. When Kane came out, I really didn't think that he was going to last close to 20 years uh, with the same character. And we've seen this evolve uh, from, you know, Kane with the mask. And then they had the rumors of, you know, Kane sort of turning into a human being. You know, he you know went to the thing where it looked like he was going to join DX. And I remember the, the storyline thing saying that, you know, DX was going to pay for his plastic surgery. They were going to be able to fix his voice box and he was going to be able to talk. I don't remember how they ever got over the fact of Kane having to put that thing up to his microphone, or I'm sorry, that microphone up to his neck and start talking and that was the only way you'd be able to hear him. I, I think just one day they just had him talk and it just acted like the microphone thing never happened. I don't think this is going to be Kane's last match. I think this is something that's being stirred up by a lot of rumors out there. I'm sure that a lot of people who are Kane fans would like to see Kane leave in a main event angle. Um, but uh, to me, if you go back over the rumors of the last few days, honestly, uh, uh, you know, it was supposed to be Daniel Bryan versus Batista. That is the match that everybody was pushing for to happen at WWE Payback. They were trying to talk um, Batista into doing this match the, the, all the day of Extreme Rules uh, so that they would know what they were doing for TV the next day. Ends up, you know, Batista, you know, he want, he, he put his foot down. He said he was going to leave. Uh, if that was the only thing they had. So they ended up, you know, trying to be able to keep him around for another month, keeping the evolution for the Shield match. The only problem is you need something for Daniel Bryan to do and you haven't had any other, you know, heels uh, brought back, and nobody wants to see a guy like Mark Henry come out there and ch challenge uh, Daniel Bryan for the title. So they thought, they, thought they, they they squeezed a good match with some smoke and mirrors out of Kane and Daniel Bryan and Extreme Rules. Let's see if we can do it again. And and, and from everything I've heard, this is this is going to be a buried alive match. I guess people can see, you know, you throw Kane into the hole, you bury him, and then he's gone, and, and he's done forever. Uh, to me, you know, Kane's, you know, retirement, to me, honestly, is something that, that's probably going someday to be planned out. And to me, you don't really come up to somebody and say, you know, hey, we're going to use you in the main event one more time uh, at Payback. Uh, you know, Batista doesn't want to do the job with Daniel Bryan. And then the guy just goes, well, okay, that'll be my last match. Just throw me in the hole, bury me, and that's done. I'm going to say this one more time, and it doesn't really make any sense. To me, honestly, I love it when WWE continuously runs storylines, and, and it makes sense. Um, Kane and The Undertaker is one of the best storylines that they've ever, ever done. We've seen these guys hate each other. We've seen these guys love each other as the Brothers of Destruction. You know, they came in, uh, you know, they, they were, I can't remember what brought them together as a common bond. If they did the whole angle where, like, you know, we're brothers, we can beat the piss out of each other, but nobody's going to beat us up. You know, we're going to watch each other's backs. Uh, the last time I think we saw these guys together was uh, after WrestleMania 29. Uh, you know, they did the match with Shield. Uh, before that, uh, at Raw 1000, it was, uh, I think everybody was going to jump. 
Wasn't it everybody was in a jump cane? Like, three-man band ran down there, and then Undertaker came out there to make the save? I think is what it was. One, one way or the other, I, I can't remember. Somebody made the save on, on somebody else. But, uh, you know, I just... Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Kane. I, when I do look back, I can think of a good, you know, few, you know, Kane memories that pop up. But uh, I wouldn't mind it if Kane rode off into the sunset. If if he came into WWF around 1995, that means he'd probably be one of the longest guys on the roster. Him and Mark Henry, you know, Undertaker's been there forever, but you know, for the last three, four years, he's just been one of those guys who just shows up once a year, and uh, that's it. Um, so, you know, he's not really on the road going around. I'm sure Kane does lots of house shows. Uh, he hasn't been on any of the house shows that I've been into the last few years. I'm sure he's just working the other town that, that WBF, WWE seems to be working at that day. So, uh, I don't think this is going to be his last match. I think it's going to be a rumor. It'd be one hell of a way to do it. Just to me, honestly, if anybody's going to bury Kane, uh, to me, it's going to be, you know, The Undertaker. Uh, I just want to see these guys go down in a ball of fury. I've been looking to have the, these guys have a match at WrestleMania for the last few years as a you know the, the real end of an era. You know the the brothers of destruction and just uh, I don't know find a way to fire a fireball hits the ring and blows these guys up and, and that's it. But uh, we'll see where we go from here. See if this is Kane's last match at Payback, and uh, if they do. They really got to get NXT cooking. I know they got a lot of guys on the roster that are, you know, over, that people like. But there's not too many people that they can stick in main events that people are going to care about. If you really use Ryback in the main event right now as a heel, people are going to, you know, throw rocks at that. Because the last, you know, year, this guy's been jobbing out to everybody. It's been a, a good long while. Uh, it's been a year, I think, that Ryback... No, Ryback... Ryback fought... Ryback and... and and uh, and and John Cena was the main event of last year's Payback, and from there, um, Ryback went into the feud with CM Punk, lost all those, and then he became a jobber to the stars. Um, him and Rybaxel sort of have a tag team that nobody cares about, but yeah, that's dumb. Uh, you know, Mark Henry, if he got put in the main event, I think everybody believed. Uh, you know the. Uh, uh, the retirement speech that he gave on Raw, everybody fell for it. Hope, line, line and sinker. That was a good little uh, deal. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, if they would have done that on Monday, and then the pay-per-view was Sunday, I think some people would have cared. But the weeks in between made people just remember that he's Mark Henry and not somebody else. You know, CM Punk sitting at home on a couch. Triple H isn't going to wrestle, you know, 12 months a year anymore. You got Randy Orton. We've already seen Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan like at least 10 times in the last year to the point that if they do it a whole lot more, it's going to become, you know, John Cena versus Randy Orton of the past. It's just going to be the match that people complain about because it's the only match we ever see. You got Batista who's going off to make movies and um, you don't really have any other killer heels out there. Um, it's about time. Maybe you break up Rybaxel. Maybe you have Ryback start getting some quality wins on TV. People don't believe in this guy as much as the heels. They did a baby face. But, um, that guy's a fucking force, man. You got to respect Ryback and, and think that there's something there. Because I do. We'll have to see what goes down, man. But peace out. If this is your last Kane, if, if this is your last match, Kane, you had a hell of a ride. Uh, you lasted a whole lot longer than, uh, uh, I thought you would. Uh, as much respect as I can give you uh, with that, uh, there's a lot more behind that. It's just, uh, I, I was surprised when your character lasted a year. I was surprised when it lasted two years. I remember when you took the mask off, it just didn't really do it for me, but you kept on going. Uh, the tag team with the Kane and Big Show was boring as all. Why they lost, why they won at WrestleMania, why they beat Carlito and um, Chris Masters, I'll never know, but we'll figure it out. Peace out, guys. True Hall of Famer there. It was a great speech you gave for Paul Bear at the Hall of Fame, too, Kane. Peace out.